Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 61. And this is the new Voyager class Sentinel Prime toy. Sentinel, as you probably already know, was one of the main antagonists of the Dark of the Moon film. And uh, I feel at this point, I don't think a spoiler warning is necessary. So he, you know, is portrayed as a good guy, Optimus' mentor, ends up betraying the Autobots, and he's revealed to be working with the Decepticons. So, you know, if you haven't seen the movie yet, sorry I spoiled it for you. And speaking of spoilers, something very interesting you may notice is that he is branded with a Decepticon symbol. Now, that's kind of a big deal, because if you haven't seen the movie, that kind of clues you into his true allegiance. And uh, it's kind of a stark reversal of the approach they took with the original uh, Sentinel Prime toys when Dark of the Moon was current and it had its own toy line. Uh, they very much hid the fact that he was some kind of turncoat. They marketed him as just a heroic Autobot, you know, this wise sage character. But now, what, a decade on? give or take. I think we're out of spoiler territory, so I, I appreciate the little nod there. Now, me personally, I was kind of skeptical of the idea of getting a Sentinel Prime toy just because I have the original leader class from back in the day, and I thought that toy was uh, just near perfect, honestly. I, I think it's a really well done figure. But it's also very old, a lot of newer collectors aren't going to have that figure, so I get why they'd want to retread it and maybe fix some, some issues they saw with the original take. So anyway, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toy's packaging, then we'll open it up, look at the instructions. We'll see Sentinel himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. Uh, we'll take a look at his backdrop during the review. Naturally, I will be doing comparisons with the leader class figure. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Sentinel, he comes in your standard Voyager packaging. You got a big render of him right here, looking very, very Gundam-esque with his proportions. I really seem to streamline his design in these renders. You got him, he's number 61, and uh, very dynamic looking. You can see he's got a lot of paint on him, a lot of dark silver paint, so that's cool. I can already tell you, it looks like he's got a fake chest, which I'm never a fan of the fake car kibble chests, but it's pretty common for Studio Series. They want to get that screen accuracy, you know. Right there, you got a close-up of his face, which, mm, yeah, looks like the same render. In the back, you have his renders. These are both for his vehicle and robot modes. You can see the branding for the company that make his uh, fire truck. It's called the Rosenbauer. I've actually seen one of these in real life, but the one I saw was yellow. It takes 32 steps to transform, so fairly complex. It's always nice. You got his little Battle of Chicago backdrop being displayed there. And his little blurb is Sentinel Prime battles his protege to ensure the survival of Cybertron. It's a pretty accurate description, I'd say. He his own fanatical belief in what was best for Cybertron. Then his return to the side. You have a different render of him looking like he's about to attack you. And then, of course, your little Autobot symbol in the window. All right, here we have the instructions. And I got a new mic, by the way, so now we can have Transformers ASMR. Anyway, open this up. This shows you how to attach his uh, ladder, which comes detached in the package. And then you got just your transformation to his fire truck mode. Flip it around. See a lot of steps here. And then you get the finished product. And then on this side, you just have a little cross cell for his WaveMate scrapper. And here's Sentinel's vehicle mode. It's a nice little fire truck. And it looks very accurate to the appearance of the movie. Uh, they got the colors down quite well. You can see he's got his ladder, which is movable, but unfortunately can only go up and down and has a little spot to kind of plug in there if you just want to keep it all the way down. Doesn't extend or anything, so that's a bit of a downgrade. But the detailing on this is very nice. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt to get all this to stay together. There's a whole lot of panels here that need to line up just right. It's 
far as rolling, he rolls well, but I cannot seem to get his very rear wheels to make contact with the ground. They're lifted up ever so slightly. And I've tried, you know, kind of messing with it, trying to tweak it to, to readjust things, but no matter what I do, I seem to always have this issue. Now, it's better than them dragging on the ground or, you know, having a piece underneath dragging, but it's still distracting. So they're, they're just ever slightly too high to actually do this. Now, if you're rolling him on a, a rougher surface, a carpet or something, they'll reach, because, I mean, they are just, just missing my flat surface here. So overall, presentation is very nice. And now here is the leader class toy from the original Dark of the Moon toy line for comparison. And the overall shape of the vehicles is very similar. Uh, the leader toy does have some rather different colors, uses a much more predominant red, and then the uh, dark gray is replaced with like a jet black. So not quite as movie accurate. At least, you know, when it comes to the colors. Uh, the detailing is pretty spot on. They've got the same logo, the same number. Um, he does have an Autobot symbol on him, which is replaced with a more generic symbol here. And that's because in the actual movies, the Transformers didn't tend to just wear their faction symbols on the outside of their vehicle modes because, you know, they want to actually be in disguise. Now, the old toy lines used to like branding these guys so that, you know, kids would know who they are, but with studio series having a greater emphasis on screen accuracy, they usually avoid those. Um, you know, and when it comes to the vehicle modes, there's not too much of a functional difference. This guy, he does roll a little better. All his wheels actually do touch the ground. Uh, some details are more or less accurate between the two. This guy actually has his blue lights on top. This one doesn't. He just has kind of like a molded bar across the top there. Uh, one big difference functionally between these is that Leader Sentinel's ladder can extend much further. It has like a second joint there. It makes it a lot more useful for fighting fires. And it can turn. So the ladder is done way, way better on this guy. And there's no reason this couldn't have had that added functionality. They just decided not to include it, I'm sure, for cost-cutting measures. So overall, when it comes to the screen accuracy, I would say the Voyager takes the cake. When it comes to actual fun and functionality, I would say the leader class does that a bit better. Okay, let's transform Sentinel to his robot mode. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna bend his ladder back and this top half's gonna tab into the bottom half like so. Make sure everything's pressed down out of the way. Then, you're gonna remove these, which are his blades. They're just kinda wedged in there. So you just wriggle them loose like that. Set those aside. Now, we want to pull the top of the cab just kind of down and off with everything. It holds on pretty tightly, so get your fingers right in there and just kind of pull down a bit like that. Then we're going to pull down on this section, which has the legs on it. You just want to remove it from the top like that. Should all untab pretty neatly. Uh, for these little mirror things, go ahead and just kind of push them down to where they're about flush with the windshield. Now, I'm gonna untab his fists from this whole ladder top thing and swing these panels out like so. Get all that out of the way. Now I gotta lift Sentinel's head up. So just get that whole assembly up there. Fold this in, fold that in. I'm gonna fold in his windows here. They should tab right in these holes like that. Now, I'm gonna rotate this whole lower half around. Go ahead, do that. It's gonna kinda bring this back a bit. This whole windshield and back section just kinda, kinda hang off the back of them like that. 
Now this double hinge, you want to kind of swing up and in. You get his torso to come together like so. Now these panels here, you're gonna fold them in, a little tab into the sides. Move the arms down. And then these panels are his fake windshield chest pieces and they just fold in over the actual windows. Flip his little pauldrons up. I'll separate his feet. I'm gonna separate these panels. Like that, just kind of pull it away. Lift his feet up, and these shin pieces up and out of the way. I'm gonna spin all this around, this lower part. Fold this small panel in until it clicks into place. And then this one, you're gonna turn it out the ball joint, bring it up, and this tab's gonna go into the side here. Like so. Then you go ahead, bring the shin down, plug it in. There's one foot. So do the same thing here. It's out of the way. Spin. Close. Rotate. Tab. Tab. Done. Now we got him standing up. All right, last bit. Let's take his little top pieces here, separate them, splay them out a little bit. Get that whole cloak thing going on. All right, here we go. This is his robot mode. And uh, something that's weird about it is the way his feet and his legs come together, he's required to have a slight bend in his knees to get him to stand the right way. So I'm not really crazy about the way that worked out. Uh, they are molded into a permanent A stance. So there's no tilt, but at least he's not standing just straight up like a robot, which may be ironic. Now for his weapons, take them, straighten the handles out, and just plug them into his fists from both ends until they connect again. And there you go. This is the completed robot mode for the new Voyager Sentinel Prime. Now, does it look good? Yes, it does. It looks very, very good. The colors are fantastic on this thing. A lot of molded detail on the face that really captures how he looks in the movie. We got like that eerie blue glow in his eyes there. Uh, the tolerances are fantastic. Everything holds together well. He's pretty much fully posable aside from the aforementioned ankle issue, and the fact that you can only turn his torso about this far because of kibble issues. So he looks great, and for the most part, functions great. Got a few minor weaknesses, but nothing terrible. But now it begs the question, how does he compare to the original, or at least the original leader? Well, here is that toy in its robot mode, and you can see some pretty stark differences. Again, he's much more predominantly red than the new Sentinel Prime is, which does make him less screen accurate. He's quite a bit blockier in design, and that's owed mainly to the fact that his chest is actually transformed legitimately. Instead of just slapping on fake chest windows, he actually has his windows and panels fold up and everything. So, you know, it's much bulkier. Does have electronics which do actually still work after all these years, that's good. And then the other big thing you may notice that he has that our new Sentinel doesn't is the shield. And to me, that was just such a loss. You know, in, in modern generations era where they're going out of their way to recreate all these characters, I'm used to them kind of skimping on the accessories where, you know, they do an update that's pretty faithful, but they leave things out for the sake of, you know, budgets and part counts. Uh, so I'm not surprised this happened, but it is frustrating that the new Sentinel only comes with his swords. Uh, if they weren't gonna do the shield, they could have, you know, at the very least included his little cosmic rust cannon. That would have been cool. I think it'd be the first time we'd ever see that in toy form. But I don't know. I'm definitely not pleased with the new direction they're going there. So now seeing these two together, 
there's a lot of pros and cons that are pretty easy to point out about both. The new Sentinel toy does look amazing. It's very streamlined looking. However, that is achieved by having to cheat the transformation quite a bit. Now, you do also run the issue of him having the, the windshield backpack. That's very noticeable. It doesn't tuck away neatly, it's just there. Whereas the kibble on this Sentinel actually looks very good. It's all just panels that look like part of a, some sort of a drape or armor or something. Um, his leg transformation is also better because you have the wheels kind of tucking up in a more screen accurate position instead of just hanging out on the inside there. So, I don't know, when, when it comes to the bells and whistles, this new toy is very, very lacking. Personally, I don't hold the electronics against him because I, I don't really care about electronics in the toys. Like, it's a cool gimmick to have, but it, to me it's unnecessary and a lot of the time just kind of gets in the way. Really good example is the new Masterpiece Optimus, who has a massive backpack just because they had to, you know, put sounds in there. So, I don't know. As a showpiece, as something to go in a, a studio series collection or movie collection, I will say that the new toy does work better. He's much easier on the eyes, is much closer overall to the appearance of Sentinel Prime in the movie. As far as a quality toy, though, and a quality Transformer, I still really prefer the Leader Class toy. He manages to do so much so well. I guess the best thing I can compare this situation to is how I feel about the uh, Studio Series Optimus Prime, like the second uh, version, the retool, against his Revenge of the Fallen Leader, and that one is more streamlined it might have, you know, kind of better proportions to the movie, but it's not nearly as intricate or exciting of a toy as the original leader, which had all sorts of moving parts and had like the better transformation and everything. So I think the same holds true here. You know, when you're, you're downscaling something, it's going to lose its complexity. You're gonna have to simplify things. And I think the toy suffers for that. Again, I, I hate the whole fake windshield thing. Now, I do think it's kind of clever how they hid the windshields, like the fake windshield chest, just inside of these flat panels. I, I will give them that. It does look kind of cool the way that comes together. But I don't know, I just, I can't help but feel just a little robbed by the whole experience. Now that may just be me looking through the lens of, you know, what has been. If you're a newer collector, it, this isn't gonna make a difference to you, right? This is kind of the standard of toy you've always known. You know, nice detailing, good articulation, all that, but relatively simple designs. The old toys were far more intricate in the way everything came together. And that did mean that they weren't always screen accurate, but they, in my opinion, made much better Transformers. So, I don't know, that's kind of how I feel. Also, again, I, I just, I really hate the fact that they skimped on the accessories can't tell me they couldn't have included a shield if they wanted to. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that kind of wraps it up for me. So what do you all think of the new Sentinel? Do you uh, see him as an improvement or, you know, kind of a letdown compared to the old one? Or are you not concerned about that? You just judge a toy on its own merits. And if so, you know, what do you think of it then? I'd love to know what you all think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Voyager Sentinel Prime toy. And with all that said, I will see you next time on Transformers ASMR.